Yeah, Kevin, if I could just interrupt, I think what Jamie Dimon would say and what the, the many corporate leaders who signed that statement would say is that not that we should be more like Scandinavia, we should be more like America. America didn't used to have such extremes uh, of wealth and poverty. Uh, we used to have a strong middle class and, and that uh, has, has been badly harmed. So I, I think it isn't it misstating this to put it in terms of European uh, uh, social democracy? It's really a, a call to be more like the America that you and I grew up in in the 1950s and 60s. Right. I think the America that we grew up with uh, in the 50s and 60s was basically one where firms were profit maximizing. And, and I'll, I'll flip it around, like, you know, talk about poverty. You know, so Donald Trump comes in and pursues, you know, very capitalist policies, which I, I have a lot of inside detail in the book about, you know, what we were thinking in the Oval Office and, you know, how the things became law. And those policies had a massive positive effect on social justice. You know, uh, the number of people living in poverty dropped by more than six million, the biggest drop we've had since World War II. You know, income growth. We we said when the tax cuts were passed, you'd get four thousand dollars a year in income growth. We actually ended up uh, getting six thousand more. Uh, income inequality sky skyrocketed. Uh, you know, as before President Trump. Uh, came to office and dropped sharply uh, when he was in office. And so, so the point is not to criticize the objective. You know, I think that we should all celebrate that wage growth was higher for people in the bottom decile than the top decile, you know, pre-COVID in the Trump administration, that poverty dropped by more under him than it had for any other president. We should all celebrate that. Uh, and, and I think that the reason why, like, like, think of all the people that tell you income inequality is the number one issue. It's the number one policy issue. We've got to address income inequality. You know, where were those people when income inequality was was dropping? Wage growth for uh, middle class people is the most important is the most important thing. Blue collar wages is the most important thing. Well, well gosh, they were completely flat uh, during the Obama administration and they grew sharply. Uh, wage growth uh, grew, grew sharply after Trump. And, and, and so so I think that you then have to ask yourself, well, if those are really the objectives uh, of the people, uh, then first we should maybe be a little nicer to each other because hopefully, David, you agree that I share those objectives. I just think that a capitalist society is the thing that delivers it better. Uh, then, you know, basically, I think Trump's policies kind of proved that those things worked or at least provided additional evidence. You know, proof is a strong word. Uh, and, and, and so then you have to wonder, well, why, despite that, is everybody like throwing all those policies out the window right now? And proposing things like AOC and Bernie Sanders are proposing that take us very, very radically in a, in a different direction. Uh, give you know, like, shouldn't you at least be curious about why income inequality declined under President Trump? You know, I have a well, strong well, theory of why it did. Um, you know, we'll and, get, and we'll get, Kevin, we'll, we'll get to we'll get to the 